right. Is there any blessed folks in here? Yes! Yeah. Right. Let me hear it one time. I am blessed. I am blessed. Yeah. Hey, Jeff, will you flip that light for me, please? Thank you. I forgot to say a while ago, and he was supposed to remind me, Ken, on the... It's a fiddle down here. Other places it's a violin, I guess. But he's teaching a class through John A. Logan. When? Something. Tell me. I, anybody interested? You don't have to be an enrolled student, I don't guess. You can... Marion Antique Mall. Mondays, 5 to 6.30. All right. Fiddle lessons. Fiddle lessons. If you'd rather play the violin, he'd probably teach you that too. I guess. <laughs> if you want to know more about that, you can see Ken, all right? <laughs> I'd have to have private places. <laughs> Nobody else would want to be around. <laughs> Is everybody good? Yes! All right, well, I've just been having so much fun talking about faith. I, I'm not, I don't have it all out of my system yet, so if it's all right, you guys, I'm going to keep right on speeding yeah, right on. Yeah, I like it. I like it. It's changed my life. I, I, you know, I'm almost, Rosemary, I don't know. This might be a series. I might be done a series here, not, you know, not even mean to, but, you know, if you haven't been here, you want to go back, look on YouTube or Facebook or something, listen to what, last four weeks maybe or something I don't know we've just been talking we started out saying you know Ephesians 2 is uh, by grace are you saved through faith right it's by grace that means you didn't deserve it you didn't qualify for it you didn't earn it you couldn't be good enough for it you didn't go to church long enough to get yourself to the level you didn't tithe you didn't pray longer you did nothing it was by grace that means you, you it, it was the only way to be qualified for it is for you not to be qualified. Amen. All right? So if you're not qualified for all of the things of God, I've said it like this, grace is God treating us as if sin never existed. It's the heart of God. It's the reason He sent Jesus. It's the reason He implemented a new covenant because under the old covenant, He could not express His true nature and His heart to be good and to bless us. So He came up with another covenant, another deal based on better promises, better blood, better in every way because under the old deal he couldn't express himself the way he wanted to be known. He was hindered because it was based on our doing and not doing. And so he, he gives this new covenant that's based on Jesus' doing and not doing. Now all the hindrances have been taken away and put on someone else. Now he can just bless us and be as good to us as his heart continues, as he possibly would want to, because it's no longer based on whether I'm qualified for it or whether I deserve it. It's by grace. Grace is God, God treating us as if we've never even heard of sin. What would life be like if we really believed that? <laughs> by grace. Are you saved? And we said saved is not, you know, we've, we've watered that down and made that a church word. Saved does not just mean repeat this prayer after me and you get your name in a book and go to heaven one day. And meanwhile, struggle along, let the devil whoop you. That's what we've made it. It's not. It means more than that. The, the actual definition of the word written there means... Uh, Saved, made whole, preserved, protected, kept safe and sound, healed, made whole. By grace you've been all of that. Now here's where we're at. By faith. By faith. That means I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start believing God and believing the heart of God and believing who God is and what He says about it all even when I, even when I don't have proof of it. Even when it may not look like it. Even when it may not feel like it. Even when the circumstances have actually said otherwise. I'm still going to believe. I'm still... See, faith to me is now I have confidence in the covenant that we're now in. Faith is like... Uh, it's not something you work at. It's, uh, it's when you actually believe the goodness of grace that's there and available for us. I believe in the grace of God. And because I believe in the grace the goodness of God, His heart to be able to treat me as if I never blew it. 
that produces faith in me. And so we just been hammering faith, and it's been, I, mean, I don't know about you, but I've enjoyed it myself. So I, it's, whew, man, it's been fun. So I, I, I just want to keep on because I, I, I hear this question a lot, so I'm going to, I'm going to hit this question. I hear it a lot. Well, you just start talking about faith and people got an opinion of faith and you know there's this, there's, you know, religion will take the truths of God and twist them a little bit and wrap up religious people with them and, and then you'll, it'll kind of, they'll kind of mess with it until it's kind of a turn off and then us good honest people kind of be like, eh. You know what I mean? And so, any I used to, I'd shy away from that. Because people are flaky. <laughs> you might as well face it. People are flaky. And flaky people were flaky before Jesus. Before they met Jesus, they were flaky. Even after they met Jesus, they're still flaky. And so, now I say, see, I don't want... I, it's like for me, anti. I'm anti-flaky. <laughs> it's, it's, I, 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 it, in fact, I was so anti-flaky that I, I, it kept me from some of the things of God because I saw. Right, Jason. Yeah. Uh, come on, can we just be real about it? it? It kept me from the things of God because I was judging God and His things based on what I saw in people, and what I saw in people was not a correct representation of who He is and what He's really like. So now, now watch this. Now when I see the enemy try to use religion and people to flare up and, and, and use that anti-flakiness to try to scare me and keep me away from something, he's already messed up because I'm no longer scared. That's right. That's right. Now when I see him using stuff to flare up and I realize he's trying to keep me from the truth, he's trying to keep me from the things of God, guess what? I have no fear and I'm wading right off into that flaky mess and finding out what it is he's trying to hide from me. Huh? I don't know, know, know how I got on that, but I'm saying there's more to faith than what we've experienced even yet. There's more to faith. And people have, you know, people have made a work out of faith, and people have gotten religious with faith and all this stuff. I'm not talking about all that. I'm just saying good honest folks like us that have had our lives changed by the revelation of what grace is that we would obviously have to say this. Let's just be honest and say, regardless of what our theology is, what it, regardless of whatever you came from and this and all that, regardless of any of that, we all have to get on the same playing field of, we at least have to admit that there is way more power available for us to be walking in than we have been walking in. Is that a fair enough statement? Is that a humble enough statement for us all to say, oh, we can disagree on a lot of stuff, we have to agree on this. We have more available to us than we've been walking in. There's more. There's always more. And that's what I love about grace. That, that you know, that people are afraid of it. They, you take it too far. I'm going to tell you something. Grace is the only... Grace is the only fuel that will take you there. Grace is, grace is a never-ending. There's, there's no end to this road called grace that we're going down. It's like this thing's taking you way farther than you ever could go on your own effort, your religiousness. I'm just saying, man, it's, it's, there's more power for us to be walking in. That's what I'm getting at. And so I saw this. I get this question. The question. All right, the question. I, I hear this question all the time because we're learning what faith is and we're growing in faith and we're we're you know we're learning all this stuff and so this question is you know we've learned faith is calling things that be not as though they are right faith changes the way you talk I, and so this question is you teach people how to get healed and how to get blessed and how to get all this stuff and and what faith is and they'll say I say you can go ahead and call yourself healed before you feel healed. Yes. You can go ahead and call yourself healed before the doctor confirms it. You can call yourself healed. You can call you know, I just love healing, so I use healing, but any of the things of God you you can put in there. Anything that grace has provided. Any of it. You can go ahead and call yourself that before the evidence lines up with it. Before the natural comes into line with it, you can call yourself that. Say, I tell people, you 
you go ahead and call yourself healed. And, and there'll be people that need prayer, want prayer, want the healing of God, and, and, and say, well, I can't say that. That'd be a lie. Right? Anybody heard that? Yeah. I hear a lot. People say, why? Well, I can't call myself healed if I'm not really healed. I can't call myself blessed if I'm not really, you know, you follow me? And so I said, they say, I can't say that because I'd be telling a lie. So I want to, I want to talk about that question because it's, it's a popular thing and I hear it a lot. So let's just deal with that thing. And so uh, I, I saw this. Oh boy, I've prayed over us for over 10 years now, Ephesians 1. The prayer that Paul prayed for the Ephesians where he said, I pray for you daily that the God, you know, all that prayer. In that prayer he says, that the eyes of your heart be enlightened. You know you got more than one set of eyes? You thought you just had one set. You, but Paul said, let the eyes of your heart be enlightened. In other words, let them start seeing. Let the eyes that are in your heart start seeing. And so I, I want to piggy tail off of that thing. Let me just, oh, I got these things here. Let's go real fast. I want to, I got these bookmarked here. So let me read you a few of these uh, scriptures I found. All right, we're just going to go in this fast. I want to show you something. Ephesians 2 2 says this You used to live in sin just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers. In the unseen world, he is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey. All right, Ephesians three ten says, God's purpose in all this was to use the church to display His wisdom in its rich variety to all the unseen rulers and authorities in heavenly places. All right, Ephesians six says this. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in heavenly places. Colossians 1. For through Him God created everything in the heavenly realms and on the earth. Heavenly, heavenly realms and the earth. All right. He made the things we can see and the things we can't see. He made the things we can see and He made the things that we can't see. Do you know there's things that we can't see? According to what we've read here, right? There's actually an unseen world. There's actually a fight. He said you're not fighting against things you can see. Our fight is actually against things that you can't see. There's an unseen realm there that God through Him created. Uh, my Bible went off. He made the things we can see and the things we can't see, such as thrones, kingdoms, rulers, and authorities in the unseen world. Everything was created through Him and for Him, right? Here's what I'm getting at. God created, He said He created everything on earth and all and everything in heaven. There's, there's two realms. There's, he created everything that we can see he created everything that we can't see. Can you see that through the Bible that there is things that, that going on that there's an unseen world. There's things present that we cannot see. Right? So Paul said, praying for the Ephesians, I'm praying that the eyes of your heart would be enlightened. In other words, in my own words, that your the eyes on the inside would be able to start to see what it is that's in the unseen because you're the one that... Oh boy. Oh Lord help me. Come on. Yeah. Come on. You got it. You're on the right track. <laughs> We're mankind, right? Has anybody seen God? God's unseen. Has anybody seen the enemy? It's unseen. It's like it's like the wind, right? You can see the effects of the wind, but you can't see wind. Right? So it's unseen. So mankind, I, I mentioned last week that there's a fight going on, right? It said we're not fighting against flesh and blood. We're not fighting against things that you can see, touch. We're fighting against things that are unseen, rulers and principalities that are in this unseen realm going on. So there's a fight going on, and it's going on in the unseen. Now here's, here's what's fun. 
Because you ain't going to learn this in church. God gave man dominion in the earth. Man is created in the likeness and the image of God, right? Man is a big deal. I know religions tried to beat us down and say we're nothing but old worms and I'm just a rotten sinner and all this stuff. But God has a way higher opinion of man than that. We've been made the sons of God. And we've made in the likeness and the image of God, given dominion in the earth. Jesus said, I've given you authority over all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall any means harm you, right? So man, I'm just going to put it simple. I should take a lot of time and qualify all this, but... You, you know the word enough. You know I'm telling it right. So man is the one with the authority in the earth. Right. The fight is over man. Because man is the only one that exists in both the seen and the unseen. Man is a spirit who lives in a body, possesses a mind. Right? Made in a... He's a spirit, soul, and body, right? That's what man is. Made in the likeness of the image of God, right? God is a spirit, became a man, right? So we're made in the likeness of the image of God. So Jesus came because it had to be a man. God couldn't come in here as a spirit and just whoop the devil and fix it all up. He had to wait until he became a man because a man lost it. A man had to get it back. A man has power in the earth. I know we've said, well, God's in control. God can do whatever He wants to do. God's sovereign. Whatever happens, happens. Case sera, sera. It happened for a reason. Everything's for a purpose, right? I know that sounds popular. And we hear it all the time. You might want to throw rocks at me. But I'm telling you, that ain't true. God's sovereign. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. But God's only sovereign until He speaks. Once God speaks, He's now bound by His Word. He even said, I place my Word above my name. So once God says something, He will never go back on what it is that He said. That's true. He will not violate His Word. And He said, let them have dominion. He didn't say us. He said them. Who's them? A man. Spirit, soul, and a body. So if you're not a spirit and soul and a body, you do not have dominion in the earth. Uh-oh. <laughs> not because he's weak. Because he set it up that way. He did it on purpose. Now he wants to partner with man. He, you know, you ever... You ever hear about a wealthy father that just starts up a business just for the sake of giving his sons experience and, and giving them opportunities. You know, you hear about this story. I don't, that's what God did. I mean, he was doing perfectly fine in heaven, I would say. Millions of angels and all this stuff. And he's thinking, I need a physical representation of what we have going on here, so I'm just going to start another business and I'm going to put my boys in charge. Heavens, oh boy, I can tell this is going over good. <laughs> I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there. Man has dominion in the earth. Man has a say-so because man is the only critter there is in both of these realms. Man's the only one that has access and lives in the seen and the unseen. Are you with me? Yes. So, so now I'm saying what faith is, let the eyes of your heart be enlightened. The eyes of your heart is faith can see into the unseen. And a man which has the authority through faith is the, actually the only one that can reach into the unseen and pull into the seen what is not seen. Come on, did he say faith is this? Anybody ever talked about faith? Use this verse, right? Hebrews 11, 1 said, Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is the evidence of what it is that you can't see really is there. Right? So I'm saying, now he said this, right? Remember Abraham? I talk about it all the time. Abraham, his name was actually Abram. His name was Abram, 
And Abram's old and never had no sons, right? So God comes along and makes Abram a promise. And He says, Abram, I'm going to make you a father of many nations. You ain't got no sons now, Abraham. I don't know what it looks like. And your wife's old and she ain't never had no kids and you're old. And, and so, But I'm making you this promise that you're going to be a father of many nations. You're going to have, you're going to have more descendants than sand on the seashore or stars in the sky. And, and here's what God did. I'm going to change your name, Abram. Your name's now going to be called Abraham. So what God did to bring about this purpose is He changed His name and started calling Him something different. So Abraham actually means, the definition of the name means father of many nations. So God, in other words, saying, I'm going to use faith and give you faith and I'm going to start calling you what it is that you're going to become. See, I'm going to start saying it before you actually see... God's saying, I'm going to reach into the unseen and pull into the seen by calling it what I see it in the unseen. I'm going to change your name to Father of Many Nations and I'm going to start calling you that. Your wife's going to start calling you that. You go to the coffee shop, you're going to have to tell them you got a new name. They're calling you that. Everybody's now calling you Father of Many Nations. 30 years went by, and finally Sarah, I don't know, 90-something years old, has a son. And there, he, there we go, right? So it's saying, in, in Romans 4, Paul's quoting about Abraham and says that God called things that be not, Romans 4, He called things that be not as though they were. Called things that be not as though they were. Calls dead things to life in some translations said. Now I'm saying, what, what's happening here? He's teaching us what faith really is. And, and if we can, uh, this is, I, I'm telling you this with the hope that you're not going to try to make a work out of it. It has to come through knowing God. It has to come through fellowship with God and knowing who God is and, and living life with Him every day. Because the more, more we live life with Him, the more we know Him, the more we just grow with Him, the more we know what His heart is, and the more we know His heart is, the more we line up with that, and the more that we can see. See, I can see now into the unseen that it's the heart of God that He wants us healed. I can see that because I, I know Him in that way now. Grace and peace is multiplied to you, Peter said, through the knowledge of God. So knowing something about Him multiplies grace and peace in my life. Because before I, before I didn't know it, when I didn't know it, I didn't have it. 